Glory to God. Let's go to Ephesians 1 real quick, please. Bless the name of the Lord Jesus. Ephesians 1 and 3. Help me read, Elder Ashley. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with. Somebody say with. With is a primary preposition denoting fixed position. He has blessed us with. Glory to God. Let me read it again. A primary preposition denoting a fixed position in place, time, or state. Simply saying whatever's going on in your life, glory to God, God has properly and adequately positioned your blessings, fixed them concretely in Christ Jesus. And no matter what the chronos is, the time or state, which is situation, that what he has promised he's more than able to do. Can we say glory to God? And what Pentecost did for us, Pentecost awakened us, son, to the time, which is in eternity, that we can stop glory, becoming subjective to the antics of the adversary in our situations and always look up to heaven and say God is just a matter of time Kairos that eternity is going to come into reality yes the reality is we are all going through something but the eternal supernatural fixed place is that God can throw our blessing our deliverance our rescue and our refuge whenever God gets ready to the day that we are willing glory to God one of the issues is amen bless Jesus that what Pentecost did for us it gave the Holy Spirit the power to awaken us to the eternal goodness of God's grace which means Lord Jesus glory to God I can't pay for how you're about to bless me I can't work for how you're about to deliver for me I didn't see it coming God hallelujah it wasn't even lawful for man to utter because if man spoke it too early then the devil would try to pervert me and subvert me but because God even kept it here glory to God I'm getting ready to disrupt some people theology there are some things that only God is going to reveal to you and when God reveals it to you you better know and recognize something that it is for a set time look at David's life the Bible says that David was anointed not once not twice but three times David was anointed by Samuel and he was able to sit in place I'm here to tell you today that God has anointed you for some areas in your life in the upper room and he wants me to tell you today that you won't be sitting much longer. You won't be on the back side of the desert much longer. You won't be going through what can take your spirits much longer. Because when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord. Say, baby, we are getting ready to work ministry, not separate, but together. Say, brother, we are about to put our hands to the plow, not separate, but together. See, we're about to go up that God can breathe down. Hallelujah. See, we're not asking God to come down. We're just asking him to breathe down. Glory to God. And the Bible says at the blast of his nostrils, somebody shout, say, breathe on me, Lord. Breathe on me, Lord. Breathe on me, Lord. And whenever God breathes on a man, he breathes the breath of life. This is why Pentecost is called the birthing of the church. He awakened the church. They already had the word. They understood the Pentateuch. They understood the ceremonial ritual. But there was something in man that when Pentecost came, it woke in him to the supernatural realm that God had fixed in his life. Say he has blessed us with with blessed us 
with. Somebody say the preposition denotes a fixed position. And this is why the Bible lets us know that the gift and the calling of God is without repentance. You might not operate in it, but he called you. You might not be submissive in it, but he still called you. I don't know who this is for. Sister Laverne, and this is why. No matter what goes on in the church or in my personal life, he's fixed me there. And so nobody, no person, no devil, no witch, no warlock can separate me from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. Feelings hurt some days, but he fixed me there. Heart broke some days, but he fixed me there. And not only did he fix you in the kingdom, he fixed you in certain people's life. And no matter what, glory to God, hell breaks out on the left and on the right. When you understand that God breathed you to live in a set place, glory to God, can't nothing separate me from my brother. Can't nothing separate me from my mother. Can't nothing separate us from one another. Somebody shout, he fixed me there. He fixed me there. He fixed me there. He fixed me there. Which means, glory to God, that he cemented me in a place that when the winds blow, when the seas roar, he steps out of eternity. Glory to God. By the power of his word. And he begins to take his abode and says, heaven and earth will pass away before one jot or tittle. He reinforces us by the power of his word. Satan, didn't you learn in the wilderness when Jesus said that man cannot live by bread alone? Didn't you understand that the church of God in Christ Jesus is a fixed place? Didn't you understand that when you threw and tempted him, that all he fought you with was himself? Which is the word of God. I'm going somewhere. Got to preach this a little hard today. Because we're cutting through might's powers and principalities. Glory to God. Just say, I didn't see it coming. I didn't see it coming. I didn't see it coming. Glory to God. Say, I didn't see it coming. A fixed place in heaven. The thing that links us is Christ being our mediator. So he takes time. I know what Solomon said. There's a time and a season for all things under the sun. But because he controls the tick and the talk and the time, he says, glory to God, I'll give you a special time within your time. And that's why we have to stay fixed in proper posture that no matter what's going on in the atmosphere, that the atmosphere don't control eternity. Come on, somebody. Say it takes a whole nother strength to go higher in him. And in order for us to go higher in him, then he has to be willing to be the verb and the fuel in our life to take us up higher. Glory to God. All spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Now, what corrupts us hearing our sound in heavenly places is because Matthew says something, Elder Dolores. Listen to what he says, Matthew 6 and 21. He says, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. Neither... We're neither moth nor doth rust doth corrupt. And where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart be also. The situations that go on in our life is to misappropriate our focus. Glory to God. Because where, somebody say, your treasure is, there will your heart be. 
So if our treasure is in the market, there's where our heart would be in the stock market. And the volatility of the market will keep us fluctuating up and down. Glory to God, because most of us have not mitigated our risk tolerance, which means what we can stomach when we suffer loss. But what I love about God, Brother Joseph, is that God already understood our risk tolerance. And that's why Paul says, which shall separate us from the love of God, not nakedness, pearl, which means loss, sword, famine. So what God does by the power of his love and grace he fills us, amen, with the ability that our heart, our treasure shall always be fixed on him. Because when God decides to breathe on us, it is not like the first man, Adam, where God reached down and breathed Ruach into him. But the second man, Adam, is a quickening spirit. So when God breathes this in us, he breathes a life that awaken us, amen, man completely to the resurrected life of Jesus Christ somebody say he restores us when he wakes us to a life in him that we never even imagined and God how can I live a life that I never even imagined if I put any confidence in my flesh you can't put no confidence glory to God in what you can buy in what you can steal or what you can possess you got to put your confidence in the God that created all things. Look at what John said. John said in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God and there was not anything that was made that was not made by him. Tell somebody glory to God. If you believe that God made you then you have to put your confidence in that he has use for you. Now, and I'm going to share something with you. Unlike Adam who was created, you was begotten. Hallelujah. Begotten of his spirit, washed in his blood. I know I came out of Mary and Joseph's womb, but when he called me, he called me by his spirit that is full of grace and truth. I'm going somewhere today, Pastor James. Tell your neighbor that I was not called just out of the womb, but like Jeremiah, he said, before you ever entered into your mother's womb, he said, I foreknew you, which means I begotten you. I begotten you by the only thing that I can begat with. And the only thing that God begats with is his word. So the adversary been throwing all kind of stuff at you. But what he didn't realize, just like when the Bible says that heaven and earth will pass away before one jot or tittle of his word, Satan, you did improperly analyze that we are the word that had become flesh we are the word of God you can't destroy you can't take the word out of our life out of our heart look at your neighbor and say he's preaching to us today you are the living word of God that's who you are somebody say I'm the begotten of the father if that's who Jesus is and you're the church, the body compact jointly fit together, then who are you? Who are you? You are the word of God spoken from eternity and fixed and settled into time. Glory to God. Somebody say, I'm somebody in God. Hallelujah. I'm the thought and the word of God that became flesh. Verse 4, Sister Ashley, read it for us. I'm upsetting people theology. I'm sorry. Let's go. According. According. As right? He has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Glory to God. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. So we have been created out of the word of God. Am I right about it? Come on, talk back to me. Amen. 
Amen. Glory to God. And so what the adversary always try to do is make us lose our place of origin. He wants us to think, and that's why the Bible says, think on those things that are good, pure, lovely, and of a good report. He constantly and consistently wants us to think earthy. Glory to God. But when God thought about us that are chosen, he thought spiritually and chose us to be in a position in time that he would be able to show to all the universe what is the brightness of the glory of his church. Glory to God. Say, we are the royal diadem. Come on, Verse Sister four. Ashley. According as he hath chosen. According as he hath chosen. Let's look at the word chosen. Somebody say, he chose me. He chose me. Ek legomai in the Greek. Ek, amen, is a primary proposition denoting origin. Somebody say, I'm the ek in God. Come on, E-K. Come on, somebody say, I'm the ek in God. You get an EKG, right? And it gives you the rhythm. It lets you know what your heart and stuff is doing. Well, God wants us to know that you are the rhythm of God. You are the ek in God. Somebody say, I am the ek. I am the proposition. Or ek means the primary proposition denoting the origin. The point whence action or motion proceeds. So when God looked at us, amen, he took action pastor Amir towards us and what glory to God amen Lego my means it is the distinctive word in logos that has now become flesh or form so we were the thought of God in origin and when he spoke the logos he spoke the logos concerning us that we would become once his spirit hits us the fullness of what he premeditated meditated and thought towards us look at your neighbor and say I know the adversary he's been trying to strip me of my zeal and my position but when God thought about me he made me the Lego by glory to God I was with him in the predetermined counsel of God I was with God in motion and in proceeds which means that when God sent the Holy Holy Spirit on the 120 he was already thinking and had predetermined that the church will come to life tell your neighbor say it's only a matter of time before the Holy Spirit hits my heart the way it needs to hit my heart and everything that God said we would be in eternity the fixed place glory to God shall manifest in time don't you realize this is why the Bible says we have all power over all power of the adversary because before Satan was Jesus is look at your neighbor and say before my trouble ever came he already made a solution the Bible says a way of escape because all God is doing now is perfecting in your life that you are who he says you are you are the thought of God you are the intention of God and this is why Paul said for we know that all things work together for the good of them that love God and are the called according to his purpose you are the place of origin when Jesus said prepare me a body and I go down he is the mediator between God and man and if he's going to be the mediator then he has to take the place in becoming a man he is the hypostatic union which means he's a hundred percent God and a hundred percent man that he not like with Adam said let us make a man but he said it this way that I will allow them to become a man and the man that God is allowing you to become is the man of God tell that devil say I am as much hypostatic union as Jesus is I'm born of his spirit I'm washed in his word 
This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. And the more I praise him, the more he inhabits me to his order. Fill the room. This is why on the day of Pentecost, nothing happened outside. It was an inside job. We didn't see it coming because we didn't realize that when we were one accord, that something happens. Tell your neighbor, you're awakened to who you are. The word of God becomes flesh. Oh, y'all making me preach too hard. Look at here, the eclegami, primary position, denoting origin. Somebody say, the logos in the beginning, chosen in the beginning. Well, if God is the beginning, how can you be chosen outside of him? Help me, Holy Spirit. So what the devil tries to do is be so counterintuitive that he wants us to think that we was not chosen before the foundation of the earth. So every time we look at situations, we would think that that's a state that God can't deliver us from. But when I begin to comprehend that I was in the act of God, in the place of origin, that when God became God, I was on his mind. Help me, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. And the fact that we are chosen is not that God decided at some point to choose us, but he woken us to our chosenness by the word of grace and truth. Oh, help me, Holy Spirit. Can you just give him a praise? Because when you realize that you were chosen, you understood that you wasn't qualified. Can you give God a praise today? That when you realize that you were chosen, that he chose you in him. And if anybody's going to do it, somebody say, Jesus, he's going to do it for me. I don't see anything in my circumference of how we coming out but tell your neighbor where the day of Pentecost fully came they heard a sound I'm in the upper room I hear a sound I don't hear noise I hear a distinct difference of what things should be versus what they are going to be and that's why the Bible says he'll give us power to call those things that are not as though they are because when the sound begins to reverberate in our spiritual mind we look out over glory and we say my daddy sitting up here balling he got pearly white gates he got trees with leaves that are healing my daddy sitting up here he walking not on water but translucent street to go come on daddy give me some of this give me some of that let me take some of this down in a time because the state of the affairs don't look good but you're still God and as long as you're God I got access and as long as you're powerful your word gonna live I love the prophet J.A. Jones he would say like this can I make it live when I was young I didn't understand but the can I make it live can I make the word become flesh Paul said you are a living epistle read of all men when you see me you do see Jesus no I don't think I'm God but I am the man of God the devil is a liar you are who you are by the grace of God 